In recent years, there's been kind of huge increase in studying the tra wildlife trade in general, um, in particular illegal wildlife trades, so things like ivory. However, the trade in insects and invertebrates in general has received a lot less attention. The main reason why I was interested in this project is really to try and raise awareness about the trade in beetles like the titan beetles. There are thousands of different species which are currently traded, um, but in this particular project we thought that we would just focus on one really beautiful, charismatic animal in order to try and get people more engaged in talking about both the, the brilliant sides of the beetle trade, like ecotourism, and also perhaps the less good sides, you know, the illegal trade in certain species as well. Despite them being so valuable to collectors and, you know, people come from all over the world here to see them, to collect them, so little no is known about the natural history. But actually being here and talking to people who live and work in the area as entomologists, we've kind of got more anecdotal knowledge about titans themselves. Based on what we know about other longhorn beetles, we expect that it's a species that has a very long period as a larvae before it emerges as an adult beetle, which perhaps might be more susceptible to declines with trade. A lot of species are traded without us knowing very much about their reproductive biology. And that is something that could have an impact, not just on the titans themselves, but on the kind of wider ecosystem, because we don't know where they fit in. We are currently in the Core Mountains, which will enable us to go out and light trap for titan beetles. We decided to go for the titan beetle because it's the largest body beetle in the world. So even though they're collected and sold for large amounts of money, very little is known about their natural life history. Very little has been done in terms of looking at um, tracking beetle movement. In the best case scenario, what we hope to find is at least four of these amazing creatures and then be able to track their movements over the, the course of a couple of weeks. The worst case scenario is obviously that we can't catch any beetles and these are a very elusive species. On sait qu'un titan sur le marché peut se trouver facilement autour de 500, 600 euros, voire plus. Je voudrais aimer le titan beetle être une autre qui va être extinct parce que le manque d'awareness avant que les gens ne découvrent son existence. Et ce qui n'est pas toujours très connu, c'est comment les gens ont remové plusieurs ou plus individuels would actually influence the whole population. So the impact of taking just one species out could be significant. We just don't know, and that's the saddest thing. We need that research. We need people to go out there and find out about these beasts before they all disappear. We had our second night of light trapping last night. Uh, it was a lot of fun but didn't entirely go according to plan. The, the rain was a little bit sticky at times and at one point uh, the light trap actually fell apart which was, uh, which was pretty exciting. Huge diversity of invertebrates here of course which is what attracted us to the place, um, especially moths like giant saturnidaes, sphingidaes and so many other things which we don't, we're not even sure what they are don't have any titans yet which is which is kind of disappointing but it is only day two of, of seven nights of light trapping and there's kind of a reason why people don't study these all the time so I'm kind of hopeful that in the next few nights we might see something. Our luck changed in the third night and we finally managed to get three titan beetles. We had thought that titans would, wouldn't start coming until about 1am or a bit later but the first one just plonked straight in front of the um, light trap sheet at about 11.30, 11.45 at night. Should we put him in here? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 we got everything. We've got to be so careful not to lose this bad Huge guy, about 15 centimetres. Eleanor jumped straight onto him so and we started taking measurements from there. So we got out the calipers to measure its there. thorax, abdomen and also whole length of the beetle. So also three, weighed it and then had to get into action to stick our little tags onto it. These pip tags weigh less than one gram and send out radio passes. So later with our receiver, we triangulate the signal to find out where the beetle has got to. I think we should see if we can get him to chew, jump down on that. Yeah, that, that's big enough. Yeah. This was a little bit tricky. These beetles are not only huge, they're also incredibly strong. So it was very hard handling yeah, them. Yeah, that's, that's enough. That's more than enough, yeah. Because you don't want it to go down onto him very much. 
Okay, you ready? You good? You good? Yeah, if you could put it as far forwards as possible without it going on the first. Um, eventually, we managed to get the tag on the first one, and about an hour or so later, a second Titan was found. Um, this time, it was a bit more hidden, further away from the light trap, and a lot smaller. It is, right? Wow. So Actually, also the... This is so much easier to handle. The tiny ones are, are way better also. Wow. This is but so is this much easier to handle. As well? Yeah, of course. We kept all three of them until the end of our light trapping session. So the light trap gets set up at about 6pm. We get there at 9 to start watching and we take it down about 5am. So that's when we finally released the Titans and headed back home just for a half an hour nap before we went back out again this time of our um, radio antenna to try and track them. So, put it onto channel one to try and get the first item we found, so that was the real big guy. And it turned out that the tag hadn't moved very far at all. Unfortunately, we couldn't find that beetle itself, but we have pinpointed the location where it or its tag is. Second beetle, we also managed to locate. However, it was just the tag. That beetle had managed to wrangle the tag off itself. Third beetle, we found a beetle itself. Again, still in the vicinity of the light trapping area. Very well hidden in the grass. Still tag intact, so that's good. We'll be tracking him again later. We went to go and track them to see how far they'd moved by the end of the day, only to find that there was someone who just set up his light trip about 30 centimeters away from where each of the titans was currently hiding in the grass, which would inevitably mean that they'd go to it as soon as we'd left. Fortunately, the guy who was running the night trap turned out to be one of the nicest people ever. So he actually helped us find, well, we, we found Munchie, we couldn't find uh, the two other Titans. So this morning, Elena and I, we went down to the light trap where we had gone to last night. We re-released the first item which we had caught, and we caught up with the insect collector who we had met there last night. He caught four Titan beetles, so the first two we kept for us thinking that they might have been the ones we originally had which had returned. Mm -hmm and the plan is to re-tag them and re-release them. However, we now have a bit of a big question mark over where we should release these beetles. We got in touch with an expert in longhorn beetles of French Guiana. He gave us lots of advice about what he thought the biology of the titans was like um, and really reassured us that it was okay to move them down the road and this probably wouldn't have any impact on them or the local population. So that was a real relief. So we went ahead and did that only to come back and find that the Titans had managed to remove all of their tags. So, we went back to the drawing board and have come up with a whole new additional plan to what we were doing. We're still planning to release them and tag them, but in the case that they keep falling off, we are now starting to collect some data before release. Um, so we've set up uh, one of the rooms in the lodge as a arena. Um, so we've, we've set down a grid square so we can track their movements in this space and we're going to watch them for 24 hours to collect, you know, just some really basic data on activity levels at different times of day. So we've been taking it in turns um, to have three or four hour shifts um, and on every hour we've been kind of just observing the titan's behaviour um, for a five minute stretch at a time. They don't move around a huge amount during the day but have like bursts of activity during the night. We've had seen titans flying around, um, crawling on surfaces, like climbing up walls, so it's been really interesting and we've been trying to like track exactly where they go within the kitchen to figure out how much they're moving, what kind of movements they're doing and when in the day they're doing it. After getting in touch with Frederick a few days ago, getting some advice from him about longhorn beetles, he really kindly invited us to go and see the types of work that they're doing. It was an unbelievable opportunity for us to go and see the different amazing traps that they've got going and the sheer scale of what they're doing. Yeah, the, uh, the finally, we, we would do yeah, some yeah. comparison between uh, yeah, yeah, blue, yeah. Uh, yeah. P uh, pink. Now the one that uh, oh, cool. too much. Uh, uh, butterflies oh, with yeah, this color, yeah. so we put the, the, the blue one. Yeah. One the, on the floor, and the other one are uh, on, the, the, on the, the canopy. canopy. Oh, with the yeah. same light, so we can compare. The society which uh, Frederick works with have been doing unbelievably cool things. Long term studies in the local area to get an, a feel for 
what's about, as well as really interesting expeditions into deeper parts of the forest to look for new species and to study the, the variation in, in invertebrates around there. Last behavioural study done. <laughs> so we've finished 48 hours yeah. of observations on two different beetles. It was really interesting to see um, the nighttime, daytime patterns that they, they were showing, and then also so satisfying to be able to release them the next day. So it's a wrap now. It's our last day in French Guiana, and it's been a really, really interesting and valuable experience coming here. Um, the hours we've been doing, you know, often we've been going out at 9 and finishing at 4am and then doing observational checks once every hour. So this expedition has been very, very difficult. I do feel sad about uh, leaving the jungle and leaving these titans when there's still so many questions to be answered. So we've not only found out about titans themselves and their behaviour, we've also found out how hard it is to track them and maybe that we still need a few more technological advances before we can get tags which um, are the perfect fit for them. We've only just really scratched the surface about the titans and their behaviour and I absolutely want to come back and learn more about it but it's really good to know that we've made even the smallest start into investigating this incredible and mysterious animal.